Hello and welcome to the Matt Lagore Show. I'm your host, Matt Lagore. Uh, today we are at September 7th, 2017, which is after Labor Day. And uh, anybody under the age of 17 right now is so depressed because they're back in school and their summer's over. Uh, last night, my uh, 10 year old daughter, as I was putting her to bed, she said to me, Dad, only 179 days left. And I said to myself, well, listen, I'm really sorry to hear that. You're only gonna get a vacation uh, every two months for a week for the rest of the year, and you only have to work 180 days a year. I, I don't really feel that bad for you. But nonetheless, you know, it is kind of an overwhelming feeling in New England when the summer's over, the fun's over. But the truth is that this time of year in New England is absolutely the most beautiful time uh, the air is uh, the most tempid, uh, the nights are crisp, apples, corn, all that stuff, hay bales, it's so beautiful. The iconic picture of New England obviously is the leaves, the apples and everything because the, the be most beautiful time is right now from now until about November and that's the beauty of New England is that from April to around November is really ideal weather, uh, not so much January, February in March, but when you come into the spring, New England comes back to life again, and it is a really, truly moving experience, I think, for everybody. We're very used to it, but when you really think about it, what happens is everything comes back to life again, and you really appreciate seasons here in New England that you can't experience uh, the same way in other parts of the country. You know, and a lot of people, as they progress in their life, you know, and they live and they kids grow up, they get the idea that they should move to a warmer climate. And we're not saying there's anything wrong with that. There's certainly nothing wrong with wanting to go to Florida or South Carolina, beautiful areas. Everyone makes their own choice. But many people want to stay here. They want to stay here. And uh, recently, and when I say here, I mean a lot of people want to stay right here in North Reading. We live in a very wonderful community. It's peaceful. We have access to the mountains, access to the ocean. We're about 30 minutes from Boston. It's a really wonderful location. And when you talk to people around town, they always say how much they love it. And many people say, I'd really like to stay here, but I do wish uh, we just had some more activity in town. It's just kind of lame. After seven o'clock, everything gets rolled up and there's not much happening. And a few weeks ago, I was down at the North Reading Town Day and I, I met somebody who wasn't just talking in conversation saying we should have a really nice uh, market or a nice coffee shop. He was saying that, but he also had a plan. And I thought to myself, boy, you know what would be great is to have him on my show and talk about North Reading and the plans for North Reading. So today I have on my show uh, Mr. Rich Walner. Rich, welcome to my show. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for inviting me again. And you're a, a North Reading resident, right? Yes, I've been uh, in North Reading since 1991. 1991, and, and you, obviously you love it here. You enjoy it. You've seen a lot of changes. I, I intend to live and die here. And All right. That's my intention. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, so now, like I said before, you, you're not just talking about you wish things were happening. You're actually involved in like a movement to transform parts of North Reading. Yes, that is correct. Um, I have, uh, uh, so I have uh, two daughters who have gone through the school system, and I have a son now who's a senior. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, North Reading can be described in two ways. There's two kinds of people in North Reading, those with kids and those without. Mm -hmm. My son was very involved athletically. So my community has been going to the fields. I've gotten to know a lot of people in that type of uh, setting. And it's been a very comfortable setting, and we've had long-term relationships with a lot of those people. But now that my son's going to be graduating at the end of the year, we're suddenly asking the question, do we stay or do we go? Mm -hmm. Do we go to Florida? Do we go to the South? And uh, my wife and I have made a real conscious decision that we really want to stay in North Reading. But some of the work I've done, I've, I've volunteered in a lot of boards. I've been on the Chamber of Commerce for a number of years. And uh, probably the most emotionally meaningful has been as I uh, volunteered to work with Mary Prenny at the Council of Aging Board. And um, these are, this, this is the demographic of seniors. And when you start to really dig into that world, you start to understand that they feel sometimes removed from our town. Yeah. It's the things that you've said. There is no activity. There's no community center. 
Um, the reality is, is our seniors are um, uh, currently 24% of our population. And it looks like our seniors are going to become 40% of our population within about 10 to 15 years. So as I was saying, there's really two kinds of people, those with kids and those without. Yeah. And the reality is, is that for my son to go to school, it costs $20,000 a year for him to go. That's what it costs the town. But I don't pay that much in property tax. I really depend on my neighbors who are seniors, who are couples without children to help pay that bill. And that's the way it always works. Yeah. The people that go to school do not really pay the full boat for their kids to go mm -hmm. to school. It's really the community. Yeah. So from an economic point of view only, it's really in our interest to keep the seniors here and to keep them in our town happy and committed. From a community point of view, keeping these people in town is a wonderful thing to have happen because they build the fabric of our town. They, the, having intergenerational uh, connections is the way you build a wonderful community and keep it long term. So we have this, um, we have a bit of a misunderstanding that we need to kind of get out there that it's really the seniors and the empty nesters who are, who are paying the bill, paying a, a good chunk of the bill for our kids to go to school. I love the schools, the schools are great, we're in great shape, right? That's really good. But I really think now it's time to focus back on the adults in town. Mm -hmm. And so um, what it's really come down to is that um, I've also been, uh, not only do, do I know, oh, so one thing. Um, when you talk to the seniors, we've done uh, surveys of the seniors through the Council of Aging, and what we've learned is there's three things that seniors really want to do. They want to stay in their home as long as they physically are capable to yeah. do so. They want to live in their community as long as they're able to do so. And they want to live a life of purpose. Um, if you ask seniors right now, is North Reading a senior-friendly town? They're going to tell you no. Escalating property taxes have, prevent them from staying in their homes. And if they lose their license, there's no way to get around in town. So it's really, you know, th there's opposing forces that are going on here in, in fulfilling what I think is an ideal that we would all like to have. So we're not senior friendly. Let's, mm -hmm. let's just understand that. Um, so meanwhile, I've also been on the Economic Development Committee, and I've been a part of the Community Impact Team, which is uh, all about quality of life in town. It's a volunteer group, and my group is called the Social Services Action Team, and there's a subset of that called the ACT, which is Advocates for Adults, Community, and Team. Mm -hmm. And everything I'm talking about comes down to ACT and how it feels about things, although I have to say this is still largely my own <laughs> personal opinion based on a lot of information. Um, and I've gotten involved with the CPC and the MAPC studies. MAPC, without boring on the acronym, is basically a well-respected planning organizations that people, um, town planners use to help identify studies. And so there's been some studies we've already conducted that lead to us to potential solutions to solving many problems. Can I just interrupt you sure. for a second? Yes. All right. First of all, when you said in 10 to 15 years that 40% of our community is going to be seniors, I was like, wow, man, w w a bunch of old people must be moving in. And then I started doing some math, and I realized you're talking about me. That's all right? And the, me. <laughs> <laughs> talking about us. We're just going to grow into it, and we're going to grow in, and we're going to become seniors uh, into the community. All right? So, wow, okay, that was like a real revelation there. So what's one way that you can reduce uh, uh, real estate uh, taxes is you need commercial, right? You need commercial Correct. revenue? All Correct. Right. So when I talk to people around town, one of the things is, why don't we have a Trader Joe's, you know, or something like that, right? So what area, so, so okay, people want, you know, ability to get around town, all right? We talked about that with seniors. Yep. Seniors want to be involved, all right? So they might want a job, right? Correct. Might want a job. Or a volunteer. Yeah, volunteer, volunteer right? For Everybody needs purpose in life. If you don't have it, forget it, all right? That's correct. Um, so they might want a job. They might want to, they might want to volunteer. Uh, they also might want a place to go, right? That is correct. You know, I know with, with my family, when it's time to go out to dinner, we go through, okay, we could go here, here, here. Oh, we're really out of choices right now, all right? I guess we're going to another town. Correct. And where do we go? Go up to the Market Street up in Linfield. That is correct. And that's, it. whoa, Market Street's a nice uh, destination. So are we talking about possibly having a Market Street type destination 
in North Reading? Yes, that is the that is the thought that mm -hmm. we are focusing on because we, from a economic point of view, we know we've done studies to show that we have retail gaps, and what the retail gap is that a lot of the when you think about going shopping, you don't think about going and shopping in North Reading. You leave town, and all that money is leaving mm -hmm. our town where it could be yeah. much better put to use in our own town, right? And be yeah. more viable, keep our thriving thing. Yeah. But what does the Linfield Marketplace have? It's a great example, it's a great model right next to us. They have um, residents living close by. Yeah. And the, uh, the acronym for their organization is called LIFE. It's a nonprofit housing organization. And what they offer their residents, you have to be a Linfield resident for at least two years, is they give you half market uh, buy-in on condos. These are one bedrooms intended for a single family single people, uh, elderly people. It was built purposely close to the market, so they built those residents first before they came up with the Linfield Marketplace mm -hmm. with the intention of combining them together. We have the ability to do something very similar to that. So I want to ask you a question about it. I've always saw, saw the, the, uh, the housing there. And I, at first my thought was, oh wow, the housing must, um, must be so that the businesses thrive. But then I was like, there's not enough people there to make that viable. That's not what it's there for. And I always, I always wondered, so really it's there to support the community. That's right. There's a, there's a planning, people who are in the planning work call it um, uh, retail follows roofs. Mm -hmm. When you have roofs close by, you will have retail, yeah. especially if you're in a destination type thing. And so we're seeing a lot of these, um, you know, Linfield Marketplace is one example. I was just down at Myrtle Beach um, and I was walking through and there's a market, it's called Market Common. And there's the residence right over the retail. Beautiful, small, little condensed area. It's not trying to be, um, you know, uh, a huge, huge footprint where you're, you know, people are coming from miles and miles. It's trying to be a more local center where you combine residence with retail. Excellent. And yeah. we know in town from the studies that we can, uh, if we built this up right, we can afford, we can support at least 10 more retail businesses and at least six more restaurants. Yeah. Um, so it's, Residents, and in this case, I'm saying North Reading local preference residents who yeah. need lower cost housing, who want to stay in town, don't need their big, huge single family homes that are not really helping them out. Mm -hmm. They're not a burden on the town because a lot of their taxes are going to help still continue to pay the schools. Yeah. They're going to be keeping the downtown active and viable because it'll be walkable. The yeah. intention is to have it a walkable community center where people can walk around, get to their retail shops, get to the restaurants. And then the other key element of this is having a there there, another planning uh, concept, which is you don't want to just make it commercial and residential. You want to build in some sort of a civic center, some sort of a community center where people can gather. That isn't about commercialization, which isn't about residents, about bringing people together. And so if we think of Assembly Row, they have a nice stage set up at the end of Assembly yeah. Row in Somerville. Beautiful. Yeah. At uh, Linfield Marketplace, they have an open grass area, yeah, which yeah. turns into the skating rink yeah. in the winter. But during the summer and during the rest of the year, they do concerts, they do yoga in the morning. Sure. They do a lot of different things that make it more palatable. We can do that here. We hey, can make that happen. You can even play a massive game of chess if you want. Over Absolutely. There. You can do a lot of different <laughs> things. Really, just our imagination is, is our only limitation as far so, as I so can see. Now, where... Are we talking about? Okay, so the um, again the MAPC studies, respected planning organization. They've done three different studies. It was a streetscape, so looking at our streets in North Reading, looking at short-term economic development, and some of the things I've already mentioned come from the study of short-term economic development. And now we're in the middle of a housing study with a um, a specific focus on seniors, millennials, vets, and disabled. All mm -hmm. people we want to keep in our town that are mm -hmm. North Reading residents. Mm -hmm. um, what has come back from each of the studies is that the area that gets the most attention is the area of the Ocean State job lot, yep. the old stop and shop, yep. call it the intersections of Route 28 and 62 yeah. between Kitties and between where Walgreens is. Yeah. This, is a high, this has been a high visible area that in public forums people have wanted to see developed. Mm -hmm. And so um, three years ago we were at Heavenly Donuts and some town officials, some planning people, chamber, variety of people came together and we were sitting there trying to brainstorm how do you develop more commercialization in North Reading. And everything we were coming up with was, was band-aids to a fundamental problem. 
And finally, I just whispered to Mike Gilberto while we were meeting. I said, is there anything we can do about the highway running through our town? And we have a double lane highway where the average speed is probably 50, 55 miles yeah. an hour. Mm -hmm. Probably not a lot of our residents. It's really more of a pass through for Andover and Redding mm -hmm. to get to the highways. Um, and Mike said, if you have a good plan, the state will definitely allow you to change the highway. And I was like, stop the meeting. This is a whole new world, right? If we can change that highway, we can potentially create a downtown similar to Reading or mm -hmm. similar to what Andover has done. Yeah. Why should it be exclusive to them? Mm -hmm. Why can't we have our own center? And by the way, that area is right at the area that we all think is the best, potentially the best opportunity for creating that type of site. So um, I learned, <laughs> strangely enough, we had the meeting in the morning. I'm going to town listening to NPR in the morning, and they start introducing this concept of traffic calming. And exactly what we were talking about is exactly what they're talking about. Again, a whole planning concept that's going across the nation where you're trying to slow people down in your own town to create community, to create neighborhoods, to build economic development yeah. and to make it more walkable. I yeah. mean, so it's called traffic calming, C-A-L-M-I-N-G. It, it, it makes tons of sense, you know, just obviously in the words itself. But there's never been a time that I got in my truck and I drove through Reading or I drove through Andover and I said to myself, oh, I don't want to go through those towns. It's just too slow. I can't get through. I mean, it slows down, but not that much. It's, it, it, it flows, stop at a light, flow right through. Yeah, you know, it, it's not bumper to bumper gridlock. And I think that when I first heard you say they were going to change the highway, I was like, oh, wow, what about the traffic? But if I think about it logically and I think about these other towns, it's not a problem. Right? It's, it's not yeah. a problem. It doesn't have to be a problem. Yeah. You can do it. Um, uh, you can do smart planning, potentially gateways, column rotaries if you want, but these are three way rotaries. Yeah. Potentially can allow the double lanes to go through mm -hmm. more narrow lanes. Yep. So it automatically slows down traffic because instead of being 12 feet wide, you're now down to 10 feet. Yeah. So you're going to slow down because you don't want to bump the guy next to you, mm -hmm. right? Um, but you can create gateways to make it a, the, the traffic flows through without stoplights. So on average, you're going to get through as fast as you would with stoplights, but you slow down. And frankly, yeah. when I go through Reading and I go through Andover, I enjoy looking at the sites. It's pleasant. It's it is. It's pleasant. There's people around. I enjoy what <laughs> yeah. they've done with their town. I really enjoy it. I mean, I go through all those areas all the time, and I, I, I really enjoy it. I, I think really Reading is an ideal downtown because, you know, you, you, could, you could come off 28 and park over there near the Venetian Moon. You can walk down. And it's really an ideal little town community. And it's not that big. I mean, you can walk from one side to the other in probably 10 minutes tops, you know? That is correct. Uh, one side, we're all the way to the other side, you know? Yeah, I think Reading is having their huge street fair, you know, That's, this uh, weekend. Yeah, you know, I, I, and, it's wonderful. We, and guess who goes there? Me and my kids. Correct. All right. We also go to the one in Wakefield. Yep. The Italian festival where they close down the whole town. Correct. Who goes there? Me and my kids. And guess who we see? A whole bunch of people from North Reading. That's right. You know? And now myself, I'm a small business owner. I have a business in North Reading, right at uh, the corner of Park Street uh, and Route 62. Yes. There, right before Winter Street. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I really like is when I have a North Reading person come in. Uh, because, you know, it's good to have, you know, community people come in because they're going to spread the word. And I've looked around and I've said, well, you know, what if I went somewhere else? You know, and I look out onto 28 and everything. And I always, it, it just looks doesn't look good it looks it i heard someone look say good. it looks derelict it looks like a derelict part of town and there's no good like location that someone wouldn't be going by at 50 miles an hour that is correct my son and i did a um because i live in the martin's pond area and we did a run all the way up to uh to um uh, cvs mm -hmm. and it's terrifying Frankly, it's really terrifying to be on that highway. <laughs> yeah. People are zipping by you at a million miles an hour. You're feeling the wind from the, uh, from the, uh, the, the car blowing by. I mean, there's nothing friendly about that. And my wife and I always describe it as it's like Route 1 highway. Yeah. It's just a pass through and people are going through. When Andover people are coming through to go to work in the morning, I see a wall of cars coming out of yeah. Martin's Pond because I leave at that time of the morning sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's a wall of cars. Believe me, they're not stopping in town. Mm -hmm. They're zipping through. It's just they can bypass 93. They're going to do that. It's yeah. a faster way in. They don't care about your town. No. And they're just kind of abusing it, frankly. Yeah. And so, you know, the other really wonderful thing here, I, I just see opportunities, right, is that Reading has had a downtown, and they've created it, and they've worked around what they have. 
and Andover has had a downtown. They've worked around what they have. We have an opportunity to create a downtown. We mm -hmm. have the land to do it. We have the studies to back it up. We have, and, and now we have potentially some funding money that came from the Pulte properties that is buying the Lowell Street thing that might help to, to uh, fund this. So we're not hitting people's property taxes to get this done. Yeah. So it's like the world has become magic and the schools are in great shape. Oh, they certainly so are. So we're not yeah. looking, we, we're not, we're not trying to support that. So there's needs in town. I don't want to, you know, deny there are. There's need for potentially a fire station, town hall, mm -hmm. community center. Um, you know, there might be other facilities I'm not aware of that's work in progress. But we have this great opportunity to create what we want because we have the space to do it. And, of course, the, you know, in North Reading, it's always a limiting factor. Is sewage is a limiting factor. So, you know, there is there's a, a very reasonable prospect that sewage will hit Concord Street. Maybe that's the place to do it. I don't know. Um, not the sewage. I, that should definitely be put in. But mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's some people that are thinking that let's put the, you know, the community center there. Um, I'm thinking Main Street because of it's a Main Street. We can yeah. do the traffic calming. I think that's there, a lot of MAPC studies all support that. Um, you know, those, those are infrastructure things that have to be done. But we have this great opportunity. Um, in my travels, I go around and I meet a lot of people in networking and stuff like that. And anytime I meet a young couple, they're usually living in Boston, somewhere around the Boston area, and they want to move out because they're going to have a family. And I often say, have you considered North Reading? And for the people that have considered it, they go, oh, yeah, your schools are great. You know, you're, you know there, it seems, seems like a friendly town. The fields are nice. But do you have a downtown? Where, is the, you know, where do people get together? And I have to just, you know, say we don't really no. have one no and that it, it, it's a it's and i'm not even coaxing them to do it this is what they observe yeah and they bring forward and for you know probably out of nine out of ten people i've talked to this prevents them from coming to our town because it really really is important ultimately it's really important especially if our goal is to have people live in north reading for their life and yeah. again the community benefits of that quality of life for all ages generations is goes beyond you know anything we can even talk about now so we got um, uh, quality of life, uh, assistance for seniors, which yes. a lot of us will be in a few years. Um, we have uh, the opportunity to create commerce and uh, level out the tax base so it doesn't have to go all under the property owner. Uh, we have opportunity just for convenience and to keep the money of North Reading in North Reading instead of spreading it out to other towns. Um, but mainly, I think that, you know, just the opportunity to have like a thriving downtown with all that. We have so much land, too. I don't think people realize how much land. land is there. We have a lot of land. Yeah. yeah. Like underutilized. Underutilized, yeah. not used. Some of it's not used. It's just it's empty. It's empty. So we have a really good opportunity. We have, uh, and we have funding from the state and federal. Is that what you're, is that? Am I, uh, well, the, um, you know, it would, any of these things would require, you know, uh, we have a great um, planning person in yeah. town, Daniel McKnight. Yeah. She's fantastic. She but there's money job. for it in there, place, there's, right? There's ways to find yeah. money. We, yeah. so a lot of these studies were done, you know, uh, with money that they mm -hmm. found from grants and mm -hmm. things like that. So. And I, I, I bet you if you ask the people of Linfield, even the ones that put all those signs up on their yard, uh, how often they go to that Market Street, I bet it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of people from other towns who go there. It's now the destination location. I'm talking Newburyport. I'm talking, again, I get around a lot. I talk to a lot of people. When I'm going to get together for lunch, they usually say, let's go to the Linfield Marketplace. Yeah, I do that. My cousins live in, um, they live uh, up, up Route 1 um, past uh, uh, Topsfield. Anyway, they live up that way. And so when we meet, where do we meet? Linfield Market, right. all right, because we know we're going to find some place to eat. We know we can just walk around. We get a cup of coffee, you know, it, it, and we can go uh, and, and be in that grass area there. You can go look at the cows, you know, from uh, from the hilltop. It's just really well done, and I, I think that the time has come for for it to happen here. Yeah, and it's especially a place for adults. Yes, adults, yeah. Because, I mean, how many softball and soccer games can you go to? I love them. I love the fields. But, I mean, that's when but you... But I'm running out of children, you know? But that's when you interact. That's when I, yeah. you, I got to know so much of the town by, from that. Yes. But I never... There was no other place to go. You know, you go to their house or something. That's but you right. Didn't, you didn't yeah. have some other place to go. So, okay, now, I, when I heard this, I was elated. I loved it, obviously. Yeah. Have you on the show. How do people who see this, if they want to ask a question, uh, or if they want to know more about it, if they want to know something they can do, how do they, 
What do they do? Who do they get in sure, touch with? Sure. So you can, um, you know, you can um, contact me by email. So it's rich at lakesidefi.com. I'll repeat that again, rich at lakesidefi.com. Mm -hmm. um, we meet every second Thursday at Town Hall at 10 o'clock. So we're always happy to have guests come. I have a group of about 15 people right now. I have an email list of about 45 people who are following this very carefully. Mm -hmm. They're very committed. They're working on, you know, understanding uh, the housing, uh, uh, how the housing was set up over in Linfield. Um, you can even call me at 978-807-3961 or text me at that same number. You know, I, I'm trying to reach out to people as much as possible uh, to make this happen. Um, the more people that get involved, the better it is. There's a lot of coordination with the Community Planning Commission, with the Board of Selectmen. It's touching to Parks and Rec. It's touching to Elder Services. You know, um, it's touching with Veteran Services. Um, it really is a, a really global effort, and the more people yeah. that understand it get involved, and frankly, we're going to have to sort out, you know, some of our options. What what are going to be the best options for the town? You know, some of the studies support what I'm talking about, but not every, you know, not every. This may not work in our town. I don't know that for sure. But you know, the more support we have, the better. And right now, we're in the middle of the housing uh, planning part, and mm -hmm. that's a public forum that you'll see in the papers. So. Uh, but please contact me, and I can at least get you on the email list, and you can follow along as we continue to make progress um, with this, with this uh, you know, I think a really important agenda, because the question is, for both of us, do we stay or do we go? Yeah. I'm yeah. committed to staying. Yeah. And I want to do everything I can to make it a good place for everybody. It, it is such a wonderful community. You know, I ended up here by accident, really. Uh, back in 2003, 2004, I was looking for a town. Uh, my wife, uh, we... we, we uh, we, we just, she was pregnant in 2004, we had a baby, so we started looking for another community to live in. We didn't like the community we lived in, we wanted good schools, and so that was our, our uh, predominant choice. Where are the good schools? Where are the good schools? And uh, North Reading seemed far away, because when you go to North Reading, it seems far from everything. Yeah. It's only five minutes, or one direction to a highway yeah. to a highway. Seemed far away. But I came into the town, and I was like, wow, I, I never even considered it. It's so nice. It's yeah. so pleasant. And once I moved here, it was so peaceful. And I was like, you know, it, it's still convenient to everything. You know, I used to live over in Saugus right off Route 1. Oh, where, so, yeah. You know, where yeah. everything was really convenient, but really everything was really congested, too. Yeah, yeah, right. So the peacefulness of it has uh, really, like, it, it, it's been very, very uh, good for, for me, my kids. It's, it's a wonderful place. So I want to say thank you for what you're doing, you know, and thank we'll do the best that. we can to put it out there. We'll put it on Facebook. We'll put the show on Facebook. The show is going to be on YouTube. And so just again, uh, we're going to put up your, your email. What is your email again? Just oh, say it again. Rich at lakesidefi.com. I'm sorry it's not a, a different address. Um, we're we'll trying. put it on the screen. We need a marketing person. So <laughs> okay. I, can't, I can't do it all. So we really need a marketing person to help. <laughs> create a website and everything else like that. But you know. Rich, thank you very much. Thank very you very much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the time. All right. All right, everybody. So I want to thank you for watching The Matt Lagore Show. Uh, again, my show is also on YouTube. You go uh, search The Matt Lagore Show on YouTube if you want to see this again. Uh, I have a Facebook page, The Matt Lagore Show on Facebook. Again, thank you for watching The Matt Lagore Show, and we'll see you soon. See ya.